Hi class. Today I will be discussing the second law of motion or law of acceleration since we already discussed the first law in class. Acceleration is summarized as the acceleration of a body under the action of given set of forces is directly proportional to the vector sum of the forces or the net force and inversely proportional to the mass of the body. So this is simply the relationship of acceleration to the following variables, the force and mass. So from this relationship, we can see that the greater the force or net force acting on the body, the greater is the acceleration since the relationship of the two is direct. On the other hand, for mass, the lower the mass of the body, the greater is the possible resulting acceleration, which means lighter objects are easier to accelerate than heavier objects. The law of acceleration um, is written as, in terms of mathematical equation, the summation of forces net force is equal to the product of mass and acceleration. If from this equation, you can see that if we derive acceleration, acceleration would be equal to the summation of forces acting on the body divided by the mass. This is the relationship we have stated earlier. Another one, the unit of force is defined in terms of the unit of mass and acceleration. If we write it down, the summation of force is equal to mass time ac times acceleration, where mass is in kilograms, and acceleration is in meters per second squared. Now, this unit is simplified into the unit known as newtons. Write newtons in capital letter N with respect to Sir Isaac Newton. So, one newton is equal to 1 kilogram meter per second squared. So how do we observe this law in action? Take for example, an object resting on the floor. From the first law, we learned that this object is in equilibrium state or stable state because of the balance force of gravity and the normal force. object will remain at rest unless there is an external force that will be acted on the object as stated by the law of inertia. So for example, a force is applied to the right. We know for a fact that this object will begin to move to the right. To be specific, it will accelerate to the right. Now why is this so? You, you can see from the free body diagram that the summation of forces along the y-axis is equal to zero because the force of gravity, force, normal force, and gravity cancel each other out. On the other hand, since along the horizontal, the summation of forces is, is not equal to zero because there is no force acting or contradicting the force applied. Therefore, the net force of the whole system, or in this object, is purely dependent on the force along the horizontal, the force applied. And from the law of motion, or the second law of motion, the, this force applied will cause the object to accelerate. And from the formula, you can see that the acceleration of the object is dependent on the magnitude of the force applied, the greater the, the force applied, the greater is the acceleration. The lesser is the force applied, the greater is the, the lesser is the acceleration. On the other hand, when it comes to mass, the lesser the mass of the object, the greater is the acceleration. And the greater is the mass of the object, the lesser is the acceleration. The general formula for acceleration is simply F net is equal to the mass times acceleration. However, this F net 
is dependent on its component, meaning to say there could be many forces acting on the object both along the horizontal and the vertical. So therefore, we must consider the summation of forces acting along the horizontal and the vertical, and as well as the acceleration happening along the horizontal and vertical. This is also what we do when we solve vectors into components. Let's have this scenario. Let's say a worker pushes a box of mass 40 kilograms with a constant force of 20 newtons. First question is, what is the component of acceleration of the system along the y-axis? Looking at the figure here, the free body diagram of the system has three forces, the normal force upward, the weight of the object or gravitational force downwards, and the horizontal applied force, which is 20 newtons. Now, the question asks for the acceleration of the system along the y-axis. And as we can see from the figure, if we take the summation of forces along y, we can see that the normal force is contradicted by the weight of the object or gravitational force. Therefore, the summation of the forces in the y is zero. Since the net force is zero, the acceleration along the y-axis must be zero. Remember that if there are balanced forces, there is no resulting acceleration. So the object must remain at rest. We do not, or we will not expect the object to move along the vertical. On the other hand, in letter B, it's asking for the acceleration of the system along the x-axis. Since in the x-axis, we can see a single force acting on the object, therefore, we can say the summation of forces along x is equal to whatever is the force applied. In this case, it's 20 newtons. So since there is a net force or an unbalanced force along the horizontal, we can say that the acceleration of the system can be calculated using the second law. The summation of forces along the horizontal is equal to the mass of the object and the acceleration in the horizontal. So to derive acceleration, we simply divide the equation by m and we come up with this equation. A sub x is equal to the summation of forces along x divided by the mass of the object. Substitute the values and you get 20 newtons divided by 40 kilograms. Doing the math, this is equal to 0 0.5 meters per second squared. So the object along the horizontal will accelerate at this rate. Now take note that objects may have acceleration in one axis and have no acceleration in another. Third question, is there a net force acting on the system? The answer is yes. As you can see, even if the horizontal component, rather the vertical component, has a net force of zero, there is still a horizontal component for force, which is 20 newtons. And this 20 newtons is also our net force. This is the clearer solution and explanation. For letter C, we can actually have a more concrete solution using the Pythagorean method. Remember how we solve the resultant vectors in quarter one? When we are solving for resultant vectors, we take the summation of vectors along x and y. So in this case, we will also get the sum of forces along x and y, take the squares, the sum of the squares, and extract the square root. So as we stated earlier, the summation of forces along y is 0, while the summation of forces along x is 20 newtons. If we substitute the values, we'd get Twenty newtons as well. So the square, so the f sub y is zero, and the twenty newtons squared, 
with extracted with in square root would still be 20 newtons. Let's try the sample problem. Let's say a 1.4 gram ice puck slip, slips on a frictionless ice from rest and attains a velocity of 4 meters per second after traveling 4.5 seconds. For 4.5 seconds, what is the acceleration of the puck and what is the net force at that certain point? We'll answer the first two problems first. Using the Gressa method, we begin by writing the given values. The mass of the ice puck is 1.4 grams. The velocity of the object is 4 meters per second. And the time it will travel is 4.5 seconds. The required in the first question is the acceleration, and in the second question, the force or the net force at that certain point. So for number one, we have to identify the acceleration. So based from the given, the, the only variables we know are mass, velocity, and time. And to solve for the acceleration from earlier, we recall that acceleration is equal to the summation of forces or net force divided by the mass. And the problem, though, is that force is not actually given the problem. However, we can see that we have velocity and time, and these are the variables needed to solve for acceleration. Recall in, the, in our lessons in the first quarter that acceleration is simply the change in velocity over change in time. So we'll substitute the values 4 meters per second divided by 4.5 seconds to get the acceleration. The value would be, you can pause the video if you want to solve, 0.888. Eight eight nine or 0.89 meters per second squared. Now this is the acceleration of the object. Now next, what is the net force acting on the object at that point? So if I will illustrate the, vi the figure, this is the object and there is an external force or supplied acting on the object this object begins to accelerate at the rate we just calculated 0 0.89 meters per second squared. So we were able to determine the acceleration using the concept of kinematics. So from a resting point of zero velocity, the object traveled the distance and had a velocity of 4 meters per second. That's how we got the, the acceleration value in letter B or number two, since we're asked of the net force, we use the equation of the law of motion. From the law of motion, the summation of forces or net force is equal to the product of mass times acceleration. You think it's simply substitution. However, please take note that the mass is given in grams. So we must convert this mass 1.4 grams into kilograms. So you just multiply it to the conversion factor of 1 kilogram over 1,000 grams. The answer is 0 0.0014 kilograms. Now we take this value and substitute it in the formula. 0 0.0014 kilograms multiplied by the calculated acceleration earlier, 0 0.89 meters per second squared, equals 0 0.001246, or in scientific notation, that is 1.2425 times 10 raised to negative 3 
newtons. This is the net force acting on the object. Please take note that the value is very small since the mass of the object is very small as well. It's only 1.4 grams. So our value seems to be logical. Lastly, for letter C, the required is the horizontal net force acting on the object if there is kinetic friction of 0.005 newtons. So it is asking for the summation of forces in the horizontal such that the object will experience a friction of 0.005 newtons while still having an applied force we just calculated earlier which is 0 0.001246 newtons. So what we're going to do is we simply get the sum of forces along the horizontal. So we have a positive force to the right, the force applied, minus the friction, which is substitute the values, 0. 0.001246 newtons minus 0 0.0005 newtons. The answer is, you can pause the video. Zero point zero 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 seven four six, or in scientific notation, it is equal to seven point forty six times ten raised to negative three newtons. So this is the net force acting on the object if there is a horizontal friction. Please take note that this value is lesser than the original calculated net force because friction will diminish the net force acting on the object and thus make the object move slower.